Hi, I'm Scott Gardner. I'm the General Manager of the Embedded Vision Alliance, and I'd like to welcome the Embedded Vision Alliance uh, community to another interview that we're doing today with uh, Gary Bratsky. And some of you will recognize that name. Gary is a senior scientist at Willow Garage, and he literally wrote the book on computer vision, which I'm holding here. This is the OpenCV uh, Bible, and Gary wrote this in partnership with Adrian Kaler. And Gary, I, I actually used this book when I wrote in Visual C++. I did some of my own uh, software doing image processing. Could you sign this for me? You, you mind <laughs> autographing this? I have a pen. So sure. I think, as uh, most of you know about OpenCV, this has become the open source standard library for development in computer vision. And so uh, Gary can talk about some of this history, but this came as a, an offshoot of some work that had originally been done at Intel that he promoted and is now ensured as part of the open source community. And so what we'll be talking to Gary about is what he's doing now, and I think uh, perhaps you could fill us in on some of the other details about the history. And also, where does Willow Garage come into it? I think a lot of the people have heard about you, but tell us about Willow Garage. Okay, well, uh, history first, or <laughs> Willow, I, I mean, OpenCV started when I was at Intel, so uh, I was in the, first their library group and then the research lab, and so I started OpenCV uh, with a, a team uh, of Russian contractors they had there, and it grew from there, and, and then while we all got busy, it, it, uh, it was under-resourced for a while. And in the meantime, I changed jobs to startup, and then finally came back to Willow, where, in essence, I rejoined with the uh, members of the team who by, by then set up their own company, ITSIS, and were contracting. And so, as the core group of de uh, developers and maintainers were contracting, five of them, to uh, do the library maintenance, and around that's grown uh, a whole bunch of other uh, contributors, or in Google Summer of Code gives us interns during the, the summer, and on and on. And other companies are also paying for OpenCV development. NVIDIA is doing a, a, a GPU version that's ongoing right now. But Willow Garage, uh, so I joined it. It's a robotics um, incubator uh, institute, uh, a combination of a lot of things, a startup environment. Uh, so uh, that's uh, devoted to uh, consumer robotics. So we're trying to really create an industry and you know, take part in it. And so uh, it's putting out a lot of open source, and so OpenCV is, is uh, covered in their mission uh, statement. So it, it puts out the robot operating system, ROS, and that's an open source, and, and the Point Cloud Library, which is a 3D processing library. All these things come with ROS, but they also stand separately. And, and we, we're building robots, which uh, you might see later. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and so I'm doing uh, the perception for the purposes of manipulation, so I run that effort here. And, and so it, our intent is to spin off companies and, and also foster an industry, so we do open source, but we also, our first spin out is, you know, has just occurred in an area of telepresence robots, and we're developing new robots and These cheaper are robots. These companies that get created. Yes, so I mean, we're, we're fairly new, so this is our first spin-off, and okay. now we're working on the next one in you know, a different area, but we're already, uh, we also license some products along the way. But we, we also stand behind and support uh, these open source efforts of which I, for Willow's uh, uh, purposes, run OpenCV development. And so the idea is to bring together all of this technology, incubate it to the point where it could be a product, and then spin that out of your well, So we're building these tool sets, and, okay. and out of it, we've taken it just as anyone else can take the open source, and we're, we've spun out a company that's based around teleoperation, which has simpler you know, vision needs. It does have them and as far as video quality and, and many other things. And then we're, we're developing now higher order tools to make recognition easier. Um, uh, maybe you'll see some <laughs> uh, of the stuff we're working on for, for object recognition. 
and so, so these are basically capabilities. We're also working on much cheaper robot arms, and then we'll, we'll put that together, hopefully, in the next uh, spin out and just keep going. But we also foster and partner with other companies, so we're not trying to own the whole world. We're just trying to, we're trying to kickstart the you know, civilian use of robotics. So in addition to donating some of the code you develop here, how much are you involved in OpenCV? Keeping it, promoting it, moving it forward. Is that a I'm, small part of your role now? It, it's a fairly large part of my role. I mean, uh, you know, I spend a, long a lot of time running OpenCV on our wiki. We, I, we have these meetings you can find, uh, so you can watch. Everything's done openly, so, so um, online there's uh, meeting notes every week of what our priorities are. We just, as of today, learned we're accepted again for Google Summer of Code. So on the central wiki, there's a place where students can apply for internships uh, this summer. And uh, you know, that's probably, you know, every summer this will probably happen. I don't see why they wouldn't accept this. Uh, uh, but you know, last year, we did the Android part using Google's resources that way. They pay for interns to work on open source as a okay. way of giving back to open source. Okay, good. So, uh, so now we're, we're, we take part in that, and so we ported it to Android as a way of giving back to Google's giving back to open <laughs> okay. source. And, and so, you know, so now it works on Android, and, and we did a bunch of other things using their resources, getting a better... GUI interface to OpenCV and, and a bunch of other things were done. <laughs> so I, I turned it on its side, but, but you, can, you can see it recognizing here. So, so it, it gets the item and its pose when it recognizes it, it also gets where that thing is. So we put a little coordinate system on the item, and that tells the robot, where is this in 3D? Uh, and that's what you need to grab it. So, I don't know. You know but, uh, I think it looks... And it's an 8-bit depth buffer in the PrimeSense chip? Is that right? The, the PrimeSense system is putting out uh, the regular 8-bit RGB and and the uh, depth. I think it's a 16 bit depth buffer. You get 16? Yeah. So, where's the computational hotspot? I saw quite a few seconds lag from the time you pivoted your table before the software was able to reacquire all the objects. What's taken the, most of the compute cycles, you think? Display. Display? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sad to say, but behind this window, you also have a 3D display that's happening and uh, two other windows. I, I mean, so this is debug software that yeah. we're developing. You could show them the 3D display. Like, yeah. So, you know, this isn't, we actually developed a fairly optimized recognition system, or Vincent did on, on uh, Ooh. so you can rotate this and, and whatever, oh. but uh, so there's a lot of debug going on. And, but the recognition system is called uh, locality sensitive hashing of we turn these into binary bit patterns and and put it through this binary oh, hash to do texture comparison yeah to do the matching and yeah. and so it that's pretty efficient really but